Hello, everyone. This is Michelle Oliver. I am very, very honored today to be here with Mary Kerwin of Encourage Your Greatness. And I'm going to let her share a little bit about her story, a little bit about her background, her business. She has such a heart for children and education, and I am going to pass it to her to introduce herself, but you all are in for just a glorious treat today. Another woman with a big heart who's making a huge difference in the world, already has, but is just getting started. So welcome, Mary. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Michelle. I am I am honored to be here. I I um I love sharing my story. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And, <laughs> and as you said, I am my mission is 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 to build uh, the next generation up in a way that that where the kids see their worth and have confidence and self esteem, and 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 then can lead us with gratitude, empathy, and 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 do a much better job than we're doing right now, I, in, in my opinion. Uh, and as you said, I'm Mary Kerwin. Uh, I also um, want to put my pen down. Teacher, teacher in me, put my pen down. Also want to change- Mary the has a history of working with pins and papers and children. She'll tell you about that any minute. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, to, to help parents, because because you can't do this, this, this uh, I can't do this mission alone. So I am enlisting the help of parents and grandparents uh, so that we can change the conversations and make decisions uh, from our gut instead mm. of from here. Uh, and, uh, and then help raise our kids to, to be tomorrow's leaders and make it a better place. Uh, so uh, as you said, I, my, my, I made my bones, so to speak, in education. I was a classroom teacher in New York City for over 40 years. Uh, I, I ran the gamut. Uh, at the end, I did much of my work in early childhood, but I worked in a small uh, neighborhood school and I was where they needed me. So it went from three-year-olds through eighth grade. So I have experience with across the board. I've also raised four kids of my own uh, in New York City, which is is a, a little bit different than raising your kids in the suburbs or someplace else, yes. but loved it. Uh, and now I'm helping care for my grandson, who's almost two. So I, I just keep my toes in the in the in the uh, education world and, and in, in the in the latest psychology and neuroscience and, and um, parenting and now grandparenting. Uh, so I just like to keep up on all things child related. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, um, I'm gonna take you to the present and then we're gonna bridge the gap a little, okay? So tell us about Encourage Your Greatness. This is the name of your website, your company, basically like what you, your, and you know, it, it almost sounds like I'm squeezing it into a box because it really is a mission. It's a mission driven mission. <laughs> it's a, a purpose driven mission that is more like a project and an education and awareness. It's, it's so much bigger than just like Oh, hey, I, you know, coach you along. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about why you're doing this. Like, what did you see? Tell us a little bit about the need and how what you're doing now developed from that, if you would, because you're not teaching now. Uh, no, not, not, a, not, no, I'm not, I'm not a classroom teacher now. And, and, and as you said, it's, 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 this is, I, I'm sort of a dinosaur. So this is a long story because uh, I'm that old. But it's <laughs> not a dinosaur. <laughs> Life is so, just starting for all of us over whatever. So I'm proud of that. I, I, I like that I can morph into what I need to morph into. So I started education. I started in education when the trend in education was to educate the whole child, uh, emotionally, socially, academically. And, and, and um, I don't ever remember not wanting to be a teacher, but I wanted to help others grow and learn in, in the true sense of the word. And as I went through my career, I saw it getting less and less about educating the whole child and more and more about 
feeding them information so that they can get a certain grade um, because a grade at the top of the page, I call it the race to the bottom. Um, yes. Because, because the oh, school- that's so true. Say that again, would you? The grade- so, uh -huh. The race to the bottom. It's 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 all about the grade at the top of the page mm -hmm. because that's where the funding comes in. The teachers, the, the kids get graded on everything they do. There's no first drafts. There, the, the, even the first drafts are are, are assessed and graded. Mm -hmm. uh, even if, and 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 um, then the teachers are graded on how well their kids are doing, and then the school is graded on how well their teachers are doing and that's where the funding comes and that's 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 the marketing you know the, the, the marketing for schools now is is we have x amount of kids who scored this much on a test or who are going on to this high school or going on to this college and um what i remember being at a meeting for early childhood and they said and 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 the the presenter got up there and said you are preparing these kids for college and i thought preparing them for college is a whole life to be lived before you go to college. And now, you know, I'm preparing them for the next step or I'm preparing them to, to, to see how, how their light inside of themselves and how they can shine it. Um, so I reluctantly retired. <laughs> uh, I love being in the classroom, but I, it was, it was a battle. It was a battle with the administration. It was a battle with, with uh, not, not so much with the parents because, the results were there. You know, I did things my way. Yes. Which was not sitting them at desks, which was not, you know, pencil and paper, which was not giving a, a three-year-old or four-year-old a pen and saying you have to write your name between these two lines. Uh, I, I, I believe in experiential activities. I believe that you learn by doing, whether you're four or forty or eighty, because that's how you get better at things, you stick to it and learn. Uh, so I reluctantly retired and I, I missed the classroom. I was also certified as a health coach. So I thought I was gonna do that, but that didn't last. I basically curled up in a fetal position for two, for two weeks or three weeks before I snapped myself out of it and decided I would just do it outside the system and I would do it my way. So uh, my, my- I'm my, gonna interrupt you just for one second, if I could. Um, just as a, a, a little recap, because this applies to everything, not just education. I mean, this is extraordinarily painful, I think, because you shift the entire, entire focus. I mean, it's not I think, it is extraordinarily painful, because when it becomes just about the money, the funding, the ability to exist and survive as a system, as an educational system, it has nothing to do with the education anymore. Like you're just completely wiping that perspective out. And that's when they started ripping and stripping out all the things that provide the most, in my opinion, education. So Jim went away. I thought that was the most insane thing. How do you take physical education, music, art, like all the extraneous things, right? Um, when in fact, that is so essential and integrated into everything else. So the people, the eyes on the system are blind. <laughs> they have only one thing in mind. It doesn't make sense. It's, it, it's, it does not. And, and, and add to that the fact that um, the, no matter what the grade, you don't have time to explore and delve into whatever subject matter is being taught at the time because you have a prescribed timeline. So you have to learn this in two days and then you're on to the next thing. I don't know about, I mean, again, when I was in school, I remember third grade being, now it was probably more than this, third grade was being you learned the multiplication tables. You learned them from zero to, to, to 12 and then above, and you learned multiple, three-figure multiplication. But, but it was about multiplication. And now I think that they, they have a week to learn multiplication and, or they smatter it throughout the whole, the whole uh, school system before they even get the basic of it. I, just as an example, uh, you know, five-year-olds, kindergartners are expected to go into school reading and knowing it all. Now, some do, and that's fine, but studies have proven from the get-go that 
reading early doesn't necessarily mean that you're reading better. It's second yeah. half of second grade. It's if you look at athletes, you don't know who walked at, at 18 months and who walked, except for the phenoms. I'm, I'm sure there are, you know, there's always phenoms in it, but who walked at eight, 18 months or who walked at, at eight months. It's, it's, there's no way of telling once you develop it, but you have to take time to develop it. And, and they're not given that time on top of not giving any, and any extra, what they call extracurricular, which really are a part of the whole person. Absolutely. And, and um, I do want to talk about this a little bit because these are hugely significant things that impact our entire culture. And what disturbs me the most is anyone who's been a teacher. I mean, I was involved very much with my children's education and had a preschool and things like that and built schools and homeschooled and did all of it, right? But except not all of it. I was not a teacher like you, but the people who are doing what you do are doing it because they have a heart for the children and the education and they're spending their own money to facilitate a better experience for the children and they're getting paid nothing. And they go back day after day dealing with all of these kids. I mean, this blows my mind when I was looking at public education thinking, you have no control over what's happening in their world. They come into this, the, your universe for a very short time. The only people that stick with that are doing it for, from their heart. And, what, yeah. and then the system is stripping your ability to do that away how does that make sense it's like it's like from a an entrepreneurial perspective if you have a business and you have a team of people that are just dedicated and showing up early and staying late and you let those people go how does that make any sense you stifle them you don't empower them so it, it seems so odd that in america we're doing this it just doesn't, it's not even rational. And yet the entire, this is what we do. So I guess everyone agrees or they give up the, their power and the parents trust that everything's going along okay. They don't look deep or, enough or they have- Or they buy into, they buy into the grade is what makes their kids smart. You know, they, they need the is grade. Is that what they you need. saw happening in- Sometimes because you have to, it, 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 it it's not, isolated so if you don't get the quote get the grades you don't get into the high school that you want or the and you don't get the grades in high school you don't get into the college that you want so it, it, it's it used to be you know the, the extracurricular mattered I'm not so sure they matter anymore you know the kids who are well-rounded it's 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 a it's a um they want billboards for for their for their school the billboard is the grades um emotional intelligence doesn't matter <laughs> you know, which which in life it does. It, 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 it's a, it, it's an important part of dealing with people is is to be able to empathize and to be able to to, to, to have gratitude for what you have. Uh, you know, instead of wanting kids to be to do their best, it gets morphed into wanting them to be the best. And the problem with being the best is. It's transitory. There's always someone better, <laughs> you know. You know, so 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 kids who are, are in a certain group and they go through school with a certain group and they're the, the the smartest in the class and they get the best grade and then they go off to high school because I was in a grammar school and then all of a sudden there are kids smarter than them and they don't know what to do with it because yeah. they've never been. That we're not really teaching them to think. We're teaching them what to know. We're teaching them to remember, but we're not teaching them how to think. We're not teaching them how how to how to, how to deal with. We're not teaching them resilience. Um, we're not teaching them yeah. the, the core values. Whatever the core values of your family are, are, are lost in a lot of schools. Um, and you kind of poke holes in their dreams. You know, the kid who says, you know, I want to be a musician. Well, you know, you're not going to make money being a musician, so you better study to be a doctor because that's what that's what's going to get your money. Or go into IT or now, and then that never used to be. You know, trade schools, um, yeah, where they learn they're 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 
phenomenal, but no, no one ever says, I want to send my kid to a trade school. <laughs> you know, they, they want to send their kid to college or they want to, send, but to learn a trade to be, you know, it's a noble profession mm -hmm. that are, that are, you know, in short supply lately. You can so. also build an entire business from a trade. I agree that, and that was the word that came into my mind, Mary was, so let's talk a little bit about that was resilience because um, the, how do you see this doesn't, how it impacts a person's ability to be resilient when, I mean, what I've noticed is, and not all kids go through this, but you, you learn to push for the grade, you get the grade, like you said, then you go on and then there's another world. And then you have to fight your way to the top of that for the grade, the accolades, and you keep going in that direction, you lose sight of your values and who you are, what you really want, because you're all, your attention is always on achieving and people pleasing and doing the right thing that's been put on you. And then if your world crashes, which inevitably it does, and we see this all the time with the, the girl that, you know, is has done everything, accomplished everything. And she has all the extracurricular, you know, she's, she's 4.0 doesn't work anymore. It's not enough. It's, it's well, not it, enough. And then they come to find you. Suicide. Yeah. Why do you, why is that happening? There's no resilience and, and yeah. they realize they can't do it. Well, if you're, if you're, if you're divine, if you're defined from a very early age for being a smart girl or a good girl or a boy, uh, that who that becomes your identity. So what happens yeah. when your identity is shattered? Yeah. Which is, which is, it, I, I um, with, with confident families, which is the broad company and and encourage greatness is my parent, the mm -hmm. parent part of the company. But but it's 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 building confidence because confidence is the key. Because if you're confident, confidence includes it includes. Um, accepting where and who you are at the moment not saying that you can't change or or, or but you have to, or 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 but you have to want to change and and then it can't be just a wish and a hope it has you have to act on it and b is to build resilience and c is to connect to your core values and d is to dream because those four things are are wrapped in, in a very in a very simplistic way are wrapped inside you and make you up who you are and when you pull that out and when you become uh, the smartest girl in the class or the best baseball player or it, that becomes your identity and the rest of the stuff kind of get gets lost because because you're working to that one goal and, and which is what i meant by emotional intelligence you know with these things if you are if you are truly confident and, and i don't mean bravado you know and mm -hmm. as most people walk into the room over but that doesn't mean it's they're confident because because a confident person knows how to pick other people up a yes. confident person, a co confident person, uh, knows to be grateful for what they have. That 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 they know that they know that it takes work and that they can put in it. But they're grateful for the ability to be able to do that because not everybody can. You know, a, con you know, a confident person has has um, again emotional intelligence and all that 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 that, that uh, entails. Mm -hmm. But just not not just being the one I'm best and putting everybody else down because you know when someone's putting somebody else down, whether it be a kid or an adult, it's because that's the only way they know how to build themselves up, which means there's not a lot of confidence there. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so how let's talk a little bit about how you work with the parents. What was the first one you said? Accepted. Um, acceptance so it's a b c d yes yeah. no i i think it's fabulous it's brilliant actually so acceptance of who That's they are really of where they are yeah uh, also acceptance of who their kids are and where their kids are you know you may want a, a musical virtuoso but the kid may not be interested or you know um but but if you want something, you can work. And my, my, I believe in mindset. If you want something, and you you can work and 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 achieve what you wanted. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that 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 is um, sometimes it's harder work than, than others, but but you can do it. 
um, but you have to want it. And 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 what happens a lot is parents, as parents, we want our kids to be something. Mm-hmm. We forget that there's someone now. <laughs> So oh, we don't- oh my gosh, let's say that again. That's so powerful. As parents, we want our kids to be something and we forget that there is someone now. There's something now. They are it's something some- now. They already are something. Yeah, they that is are. very powerful. Do you find that parents are operating more out of, how do you deal with this? Because I think a lot of parents probably are dealing out of what we call FOMO, fear of missing out. I don't want my kid to miss out on opportunities. Therefore, I'm going to push them, pressure them. They've got to learn all this stuff. This is the direction they're going to go. What how about? What about? With, that what with about? acceptance, how do you how do you help them? Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, mindset work mm. to deal with the present, the here and now, present because because the future the future is a crapshoot and if nothing taught nothing the last two years three however long it seems like 50 years but the last couple of years have taught us anything um it's that you don't have control yeah and you can want a lot of things and it's a lot it's a lot of um it's it, it's it sounds real, but, but there, there are concrete examples that we can give there are a lot of uh exercises mind exercises that we do mm-hmm. to stay in the present to stay in the present it's not i'm not saying you shouldn't have goals uh but remember that your goals you can control only you you can control only you you can't control it you can't control the outside world you can't control the weather you can't control what another person is going to do you cannot control your kids you can set an example you can be the architect for your family and lead by example and live a certain way in your household but you can't we can we can punish them this discipline them uh take things away from them but that doesn't mean that that's going to make them do what you want them to do at the moment they will maybe um but it's not a long term it doesn't sit in it's not it doesn't it's not it's not long term you know what came to my mind when you were talking this is so important is it's probably the most difficult thing, right? To be present with what's happening. And we are, we live in such a distracted society and we're dealing with all this stuff that we have no control over. And then we want, and then it hurts and we wanna soothe our pain. So we get into our distractions instead of being present, especially with children, it can feel like more of a distraction, right? So what came to my mind though, was when you model that for your children, I mean, that's how they have to experience it somewhere, right? And right. if even from the parent, all they're experiencing is hurry up, let's hurry up. <laughs> you know, we're hurry doing- up and wait, hurry up and wait. <laughs> hurry up. I was going to say that too. Yeah. Um, and this is another thing. I'm not even going to bring this up yet. And we'll bring up screens in a minute, but it's so much easier to, to teach them to distract themselves rather than to teach them to be present. And I do want to address that with the screens after we go through this, but let's go through A, B, C, D. So what's B? So B is build resilience. Build resilience. Okay. I love that. So, yes. so you give your kid, well, well the, the idea is you give your kids what they need, not necessarily what they want. Yeah. Um, sometimes, and, and again, sometimes it's out of your control, but what happens when you're, and, and, and as a parent, you know that it hurts when, when you're, mm-hmm. there's a no for your kid, when his, his or her friends get invited to a party and they yeah. don't, uh, yeah. when, when, when they think they work or they did work hard and they didn't get the grade that they wanted to get uh is it do you start to blame people oh the teacher doesn't like you and that that may or may not be true but or do you go inside and say you know so what what could be done differently why do you think it happened and what could be done differently it's not a it's not a uh and, and and sometimes there's nothing sometimes nothing can be done you know if you weren't invited to a party sometimes kids are mean 
you know, and that's it. That's and you don't have to sugarcoat it. Like not everything is going to go your way. They don't have to have the latest toy. They don't have to have every. Um, they don't have to see every single movie that comes out. And 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 I know that that's fun, and that may be your way of bonding, and that's fine. But when it becomes a must, like oh, I have to get them like Christmas time. You know, if, if you, I remember being a teacher said. I'm going to go back really, really way back, like Cabbage Patch dolls. Like people were going crazy because they could had to have the Cabbage Patch doll. <laughs> yeah, if there's always something out there. It's right? always something. Right? Tickle Me Elmo is, 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 but I'm still going back. But that was another one. Like everybody was going crazy trying to find. They don't get it, you know. They don't have to. They don't have to be the first to get it. It would be very nice, and it's nice. We want to give our kids some things, but I, I know with my kids, I we we got them there were four of them and I was uh, and as I said I was a Catholic school teacher my husband was a social worker so there was not and we live in New York City so but they would get one you know, they'd make a list and to Santa or whatever and they'd get one thing on the list from Santa um sometimes we'd get a list but they each had to, they each either made or bought each other something as they got old enough so there was always a lot of presents under the tree but it was also them giving yeah I think that it's really easy to lose sight of what I would say is a fact that if you keep bringing them, like if you have solid values, like you were saying within, the family, value, right? it's, it goes back to the family unit, right? If you have solid values and protocols and like, this is how we do this. This is how we respond to, it's like creating a tribe, right? This is how we respond as a family when something doesn't go our way you know, we bounce back or we, you know, you just show them the way and because it's really easy to be influenced by that pull. I mean, um, my oldest son, we was raised in the Boulder area where everyone had everything. I mean, it was like lessons and I mean, every opportunity and you just always felt like, oh my gosh, you're doing that. You're doing that. You're doing, what do we have to do with our kids? You know, what do they have to have every single opportunity? There was a constant pressure. Well, so-and-so's doing this, right? So it was more like an activity based than a toy. Right. Um, Same thing. Overscheduling. Overscheduling. Yes, Over exactly. That was a really big thing. That was a huge part uh, that I noticed until we moved to a small town where there was nothing to do. There that was puts a lot of stress on the kids too. Oh that puts my a God. lot of stress on it puts a lot of stress on the parents, it puts a lot of stress on the kids. And 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 how much do they want to really do whatever the activity is, or how much do they just want to do it because everybody's doing it, you know? And and when you buy into that when they're younger. It, it it sets it sets a precedent. It sets it sets the, it sets the, the 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 precedent in motion. So you know, yeah, I, I have to do that. this. I think what you said about setting the precedent, so you can do that, and you do that, and parents often don't have the confidence. They don't know what they're doing. So you're talking about confidence in the child, which I think the parents aren't even confident about making decisions. Do you find that? Well, well, the, the interesting thing was, was I, 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 I started with just working with kids in person with experience, experiential activities, and then COVID hit. And I thought, oh, just as I, oh, great. And, and I wouldn't, and I wouldn't, I don't, well, do screens, but you know, I don't, I didn't want to do screens. I didn't want to add to the screen culture. I don't think, I, I don't think virtual reality is reality. So I couldn't really do what I did. So some of the parents of the, of the kids that I was with said, can you, can you show me? And I thought I would just give them my modus operandi and they would do it. Right. And, and then um, I realized after about three minutes, two minutes, they, I was gonna say, it took you a couple they of didn't have, They didn't have the confidence to do it. Like I can't, I can't do it. Like, how am I going to do that? How am I going to say no to my kid for something? You know, how, you know, so he'll get upset with me and yell. So, and he'll be upset with you. It's okay. You know, they're allowed to be upset. They're allowed to not like what you do. It doesn't mean that you have to then morph into what they want, you know, especially if it's, if it's, if it's, if it's, uh, um, if it's something that you really feel you shouldn't do, or you really don't want to do. And, and, and you know, but, but yeah, so, so, so to work with the parents to, sh to, to, to like throw off the, 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 the doubt and indecision and, um, uh, 
help them get into the power of, of their own parenting assets, you know, because everybody, everybody is different and every situation is different. And, yeah. and, and, and to make parents aware of which patterns they want to change, if they want to change them. And if they don't want to change them, even though nobody else is doing it that way, that's okay because it works for them. Uh, a lot of the parenting programs I see now, you know, it's if you do this, you have you do this, you say this, you do this, and that's that's how you fix it. But again, it's it's like school. They're not robots. People are not human. People are not robots, and each one is individual. And each parent, each family, each situation is different. What works when you say something to your kid one day may not work the next day because everybody you're dealing with a human emotion. And, you and then you're dealing with first time parents which is a totally different, I was just thinking how different it is with your first child, how you're, you, you don't know. So you're trying to always meet, I mean, this is the problem. They start out as babies <laughs> and you have to meet all their needs and it's, it's what you should do. But then as they grow in capability, you're supposed to let them do it. And, and the hovering thing, was a big deal. oh the hovery the helicopter parent generation i think that's the i think that was probably me yeah and then and if you have kids if you have kids with uh with with who are, who are who have certain issues who are on the yeah. side, you know then then it goes a little bit longer because as they start school and as they get into the you have to advocate for them so yes you have to and you ha and 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 you you want to do what's best for them and you advocate for them, but you, but we forget to pull back. Mm -hmm. we, forget, we, um, we forget to give them their wings. <laughs> you know, so we being is also boundaries, <laughs> building resilience and yes. And it, and it's a fine line. And again, because there's so, it's just so much, I mean, yeah. I so appreciate what you are doing. And I know this is a side thing, but really, anyone, any parent should have you helping them. You should have a coach because it's, it's too much to navigate. And you know where we learn from? We learn from whatever's out there, you know, okay. oh, we're going to keep up with the Joneses or from our own parents who we, we very uh, readily are willing to <laughs> admit screwed up right <laughs> but maybe you know it, but if you turn out all right like maybe yeah <laughs> yeah so, but okay. yeah and 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 there's not that big there's not that 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 extended family around people yeah. anymore it used oh, to be it used to be extended family it used to be you had you had a a, a village uh, yeah. to, to take to be a phrase from someone else and now and if you get with a buddy, with with your friends and parent, there's still that that there's that, that competition. There's that not yeah. wanting to look like you don't. And and it's not. And you know, moms are not always very nice to other moms. No, you know, they may be nice to your no. face, but you know, oh look, she never goes to his game. She's always so busy working. Or oh, she's always at his game. She won't give him. A, she won't let him. She won't let him go to the bathroom without her being there. You know, you know, there's there's that so that true. that true. Because when you're insecure, when you, you, you put somebody else down to make yourself feel better. Uh, yeah, you know. and there are rules within every click. I remember we were in a variety of different groups. Um, and this is when I was homeschooling my kids. And each group had their priorities, right? And if you, and it was really interesting, it, it did give me perspective to watch. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we're supposed to act this way and be having all these extracurricular activities through this one. And then this one is different. And, and yes, they talk about each other when the other <laughs> one it's, it's like, we're, it's crazy. Like in high school, yeah. okay, let's go to C is C is confidence. C is core values, connecting oh, to core that's, values. Okay. And that's, Love and it. that's different. And, and that actually will give you a pathway if you if you listen to it yes. you know, that will if, if you want if you if you really can if you really are if you can define and connect and most people can't even define their, their core values I, I do a whole exercise with people because and and i don't put my values on anybody except for me maybe i will put my opinions on people but not my values you know if this this is your value then this is how you do it and and if you 
think about your decisions and then think about your core values. Are they, are they, are they meshing or are they in conflict with one another? I mean, that's a very good way to, to, to see how you're feeling. And, and then we're, you know, we're, we're in a state of, of um, flux because we're not, we're, we're disconnected with our, with our inner values. And, and then you get so disconnected that you don't even know what your inner values are anymore. Because you're so Everything that Mary is sharing, for those of you listening, applies to entrepreneurship. And this is where I start with every woman that I coach. Yeah. And it's amazing to your point that most people don't even know because we, we think it's another, we just toss it. It's like, oh, well, my core values, we just pull it out of there. Integrity, honesty, you know, we come up with what sounds right. But it's so much deeper than that. I know, I'm sure you could speak to that. And it solves so many problems because once you're really connected to it, and if you can teach your kids that, you don't have to question everything. You just have an automatic- and not, everyone, the, the, not everyone's core values are the same. So you have to, yes. accept, they have, you have to accept people for what their core values are. You know, if, if it's, it's, it's not your values, it doesn't matter, it's theirs as long as you stick true to yours. And, and as your kids grow, they will move away from them. But if you instill them in them at a young age, they come back to them, mm. mostly. mostly. Yeah, there are a lot of parents out there saying, hopefully. <laughs> they so, do, they, yeah. Do, I, I, they do. Yeah. If they're instilled, yeah. Um, and I do- They can't help it. <laughs> they can't help goodness, it. This time in the world is so chaotic that it it depending on the age of your kids I think it oh for me I don't know I, I I know I am told I'm overly optimistic but I do think that it opens a lot of opportunities to have conversations to allow them to really explore well how do I really feel about these issues how do I I mean everything that is topsy-turvy is an opportunity to become more solid, solid in those values. And I think a lot of people question that. I mean, adults are acting so weird. Yeah. Because they don't know, they don't really know what they're like to your point, they don't really know their core values. So they react to all this stuff. Okay. Yes, instead of respond. Yeah. Yeah. So D is to dream like don't oh, dream Take i you. love don't, you barry not, not that no I'm, I'm too old to do this or i i i uh -huh. no, you know that that's not really a way to make a living or you know dreams dream it's good and 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 if it's a if it if, if a dream becomes you know they work toward it maybe maybe you wanted to do this and 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 you're you're 50 years old and haven't done it yet it doesn't mean it can't be done just it's when you quash it and move it to the background you know take you can take one little baby step every day you know in 100 days you'll be 100 percent closer i want to shine a light on this ladies who are watching this did you hear what she said <laughs> will yeah. you say it again say it again about the dream not it doesn't matter your age baby it doesn't it, no it doesn't matter how old you are you know you had a dream if it's still somewhere lurking in the back of your mind take a baby step toward it take one little thing it doesn't have to be it doesn't have one little thing every day and and you know in 100 days you'll be 100 steps closer it's that's, it's it's that's the the best. Kids, so when the, when your kids are telling you you know that i want to be a firefighter you know it used to be i want to be a baseball player girls don't play baseball yes they do now huh so don't you know just just let them have their dreams and you know if they really are focused on the dreams what are you going to do to get there what are the obstacles going to be what what you know how are you going to overcome them not to not to quash their dreams but to have them think about it how, how they can move closer to it what can you do today to get closer to that and it may not be your dream so that's a hard one <laughs> well i love it just is wonderful it's absolutely what everyone needs to hear regardless of your age um like mary just said you can be 50 you can be 60 i'm working with a woman in her 70s who started a business 76 you can do that. It doesn't matter. Like today with your computer, you can do anything. You can my business was started in my sixties. My business was started in my sixties. So 
No limits. It, it's no just limits. what we put on ourselves. So this is very, very valuable. Everything you have shared applies to any woman out there who's watching this, who is saying, gosh, I wonder if I could, whatever, write Absolutely. a book, get in great shape, have a relationship, learn how to cook, travel, start a bit, anything. We're all still children. I mean, it's, we really are. It, it doesn't really change, does it? Let's hope not. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope not. That's, that's, you know, we're all on finished products. We are works in, we are works in progress and, and they yeah. can do it. Yeah. We are works you in progress. Yeah. You are such a wise woman. Okay. We're coming almost to the end already, but let's chat a little bit, if you're open to it, about screens. And the reason I'd like to open this topic is because I like to talk about controversial things. <laughs> um, and I think there are not a lot of safe places to speak to this. Oftentimes when something that is presented and we want to, uh, you know, have a conversation about something that is so widely accepted, we just put up a, a defense right away, you know, and we have a, a knee jerk response to it. So if you're open to it, I do think that there's value in just addressing this a little bit. Um, I am fundamentally, I guess, opposed to screens. Well, let me, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of screen shy in general, uh, screen, screen adverse in general, but uh, I am really fundamentally opposed to it for, for, for young kids and young kids um, up until up until I'll say through, through, through grammar school, through grade school. Um, because and I know they'll use them in school and and I, I know that 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 it's but I think that that um, they are not interactive, even though interactive games and 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 things for kids and 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 uh, I think for for kids under three, it should be it should be very very limited if if at all I mean I, I and I mean all kinds of screens phones and 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 TV and and computers. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a detriment to kids. It doesn't teach them how to think. It doesn't teach them how to be with themselves. It takes away their imagination. It takes, it, it does a lot of different, it takes away the view of the world. Uh, I see toddlers, one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-olds in strollers with the, with the iPads in front of them. You know, they're in the stroller walking through the streets. That's their, um, that's a good time for them to learn about the world around them in a safe way because they're safe in their stroller and they could see things going on and the parents could be talking to them and instead they're on their screens. So they're not learning that. They're not learning about the world. They're not learning about people. They're not learning about the differences in the different streets. They're not learning about their world. And that's one. Parents on screens in front of kids, um, it takes away their time. You know, it, it takes away their attention. It, it's, it's, is your phone or whatever you're doing really more important than your child in front of you? And 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 I know it's it's and it's a habit. It's a habit that's very hard to break. Um, I just I just have no. Yes, you can learn from screens, uh, but you learn more by doing, and you're not doing when you're looking. Maybe you're pressing a button. You know, that's not really a big deal. I think that it's really interesting because we both had the experience of what it was like to live without them. I mean, like we experienced the advent. I know with my kids, I remember the first time my oldest son, he must have been about nine or 10 and some device had come out and he was like, this is cool. All my friends have it. You can stand in the kitchen and I can stand on the other side of the wall in the dining room and we can tap on these little keys and send each other messages. And I, re that was like the beginning of texting. It was like some little box, right? L like this big. Hey, I remember thinking, why would we do that when you could come into the kitchen 
we could hug and talk about it, you know? And so I remember the advent of this and um, I never, you know, in the back then, at least, I don't know, maybe people who are in business were doing it differently, but I only got on the computer to run my business, which I was building an online business back way back then. It never occurred to me. My kids never, they weren't, they did. I mean, my phone was only for emergencies, my cell phone, right? So you weren't constantly on there. It wasn't a full-blown computer. And then they didn't, it just, it was intuitive to me to know that if they watched a movie, that the pictures they saw in their mind were put on them. I wanted them to read or make up a story, you know, to build their imagination and then go out because organically they'll go out and act it out, you know? And to me, that's like how you build your life. You imagine something and then you think about how to make it physical and then you engage other people and you interact and then you argue and you learn how, you know you learn all of this stuff from not being told how it is every story is not a disney movie with a happy ending no no you know? and then so and they they got very violent also which is i think oh uh, my gosh terrifying and so i know i got off on, i got crazy on that i didn't mean to talk so much no. i just want to ask you this because this is a subject i'm very passionate about and few people will even open the conversation but my point is that we saw the different like we saw this taking over the world and i remember the first time i saw a person walk down the street talking to themselves I thought <laughs> but they were on headphones like that was a that that was an anomaly I mean mm. there was a time when it wasn't like this and there were benefits to that and a lot of people don't even know what it was like without that so they don't know how to restrict now there's like you have to go you have to go to a place there's literally offices where you can go and walk on different textures on your bare feet so that you can, because it's some kind of healing therapy. I forget what it's called. Yeah. Your feet, your feet on the ground is always, is always a good thing. Yeah. But people are paying for this as a therapy where we grew up. I mean, I was barefoot in the summer whenever I felt like it, like kids were always kicking their shoes off and running along going, oh, I got some, you know, I have a thorn in my foot or something like that. So all of these things, all I'm saying is like, we saw that the, the parents who are like your kid's age, probably like, I don't know how old your kids are, but late twenties, thirties, however old they are when they're having children, they don't know a world like that. Maybe a oh, very well, vague memory from their own I childhood. Can't do it because we didn't do it. Yeah, because you didn't do it. They had they got a phone when they went to when they went to high school because they were traveling and that was you know we had one computer because they needed it for homework. We had it in the hallway where everybody had to pass by. They had computer time. I was, I was, I was beastly with TV. Like we didn't they they, they didn't have TV. They were allowed. They they like like certain shows they could each pick, I don't know, whatever shows they wanted and watch it, but they, the TV was not on in the morning ever. It was not on in the afternoon after school because they were out playing or we were out playing or doing something. And, um, you know, by the time you did that and did dinner and they did all that, that, you know, if there was one show that they wanted to watch, okay. But the, and they had to read before they go, to, they, they read, they didn't have to, they read before they went to bed. So, I mean, so we didn't have a lot of it. Yeah, there's a lot of resistance against this, Mary. I mean, I'm going back yeah. in time in my own mind of, I had to stop telling people that we did, didn't do those things yeah. because they would argue the point of why are you keeping your child yeah. from learning a skill they need to know to be part of the world? And I would think to myself, like you, like they could learn this in 10 minutes. Let's That's wait. Different. But the things they're learning without it they can't, don't, they never they don't get them back. you can't get it back why do people not back. see that i don't know maybe they're starting to i don't think so i, I don't i don't um 
you know, I don't understand. I don't understand. I, I don't. And, and I don't understand why an eight or nine year old who's always with their family or someone, you know, someone responsible for them, why they need a phone. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why you need a computer in your room. I don't, I, it's just, I am, and I'm not saying you should never use, use a computer. I, you know, it does have, this, they, they, that this is the world now and you have to apply for things and you have to do your research on computers. They don't, they don't believe in books, but um, yeah. I mean, you business, I'm on this, I'm on this thing. I'm on this yeah, thing. Say <laughs> you're perfectly capable and competent, obviously, but there's a difference between perceiving it as a tool for a specific use. Like when my, um, right. kids got phones. It was when they were traveling alone. And my youngest son, uh, when I got divorced and he was alone, a lot of the time, like I was building a business and, right. you know, doing all this stuff, I got him a phone, um, for that so that I could connect with him, but he never, I mean, most of the time he'd forget to turn it on any, and then I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is even they worse. Charge it. They yeah, charge this is it. even worse than not having a phone. Cause then I worry, you know, but, um, but there's a different perspective. Yeah. yeah perspective. On it. And it goes back to, it goes back to core context. You know, why, why can't I have one? Everybody else does. And then you talk about why it doesn't, you know, you don't want them to have it, you know, why, why you don't, Mm -hmm. it's, 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 but you have to be, you know, you have to, it has to be in, 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 in your, in your core values, you know, you have to be convicted to, you, to be you know, convicted. Yeah, um, what, plan. how do you, do you have this conversation with parents or what is that like? I do. I, as a matter, as a matter of fact, one of the first, one of the first clients, my kid that I had was, was, uh, he, he had some issues and he, one of the, problems was he would spend all day you know he would come home from school he would go into his room he would be on the computer all day and she had and he had a problem turning it off so there was constant battles about him getting his homework done and him uh going to bed at night and him doing anything else because all he wanted to do was go home and be on his computer and he was very tech savvy uh she tried to block it and he figured out how to do it uh and and um so I would come and I would say, I would take him out. We would do things that he likes to do, um, but we would go out. And, and, and in the beginning, it was always um, a little bit of a um, struggle for him because he was leaving his computer. And, and, but, but, but then, you know, after a couple of weeks, he was coming out with me and, he, and then he would say like, oh, my mom would really like this. And I said, why don't you take her on the day when I wasn't with it? So he would, he would be initiating more things with, when mm -hmm. with going out. So it's a habit. It's it's a it's a hard habit to break. Um, some people it's, it's some of it is an addiction. You know there, there's, a, but um, you know if you if you replace a bad habit with something else that you enjoy doing, uh, it makes that bad habit easier to break. Yeah. Now there are a lot of studies about the dopamine hits, um, and there's all kinds of things. You know workshops you take. You have to learn how to unhook from the dopamine and, and, um, a lot of even the younger, like my youngest son, who is just turned 17. I don't know if this is common with all of his friends, but I know they'll just be like, let's just not, they just don't do their phones for a day or whatever in there. And it's a really good thing. Yeah. I think it would be very hard for me at this point. We have so, phone free, free yeah. zones. Like we, we eat at the table. That no phones at the table. Yeah. Um, uh, we we go to well. Sometimes we used to go to a place up in upstate New York that that didn't have any reception, so it didn't matter if you had a phone or not <laughs> because it didn't work. Uh, and there were no there were no TVs there because they didn't. They just it wasn't wired for it. Um, go up to Vermont once in a while to a place that doesn't have phones, so, mm -hmm. so it doesn't have reception. So to take breaks play board games, play, play, you know, things that you did that nobody remembers. I know, again, I, I, I was going to just say that again, many people don't know what it was like to not do that. And, and we had the, the benefit of experiencing both worlds. Mm -hmm. So I remember um, that sick feeling inside of me when I was married at the time, and when my ex-husband and my husband at the time was 
on his phone. And you just feel like, and that's how your kids feel. You're a non-entity. Yeah, you're, you're just non-entity. Like, it just feels bad. Yeah. You're just like, why? Like we go out to dinner or something or we're anytime when there is a limit to that. Now it's so acceptable. It, you know, I don't even react to it with anyone, but that, but children, Children haven't been acclimated to that. So your attention is the most valuable thing that we have. Your focus okay. your or your friends or your, I mean, it doesn't really, you know, there can be like a, let's, a, a no, a no phone rule at, at dinner tables, no matter where they are, you know, yeah. and you, you, yeah, I get that you have them in case of an emergency, but every text is not an emergency and, and you can wait two hours to read a text. That's where we get addicted. And we get upset if somebody doesn't respond right away, right? We're like, what, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And the other strange thing is you can't just like, when I pick up the phone to call someone, this is totally off topic, but um, it's so strange. They're like, wow, you called me. People don't call. They text first. Like we have so much distance. We're increasing the distance but then we increase the proximity through the screen. So it's a very strange thing, but it's not the same. Not the same as it's not, re- virtual reality is not reality. So that's, and that's, you know, and, and, and it confuses your mind because is it the, the closeness, as, as, as close as you could be to someone on, on, on screen, it's not the same as being in the same room with them. There's, 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 a, there's a barrier. I remember when I first started studying screens, when it became a thing many, many years ago, my kids were really tiny and um, there was, so, it's been so long ago, I can't remember, but there was something about the way a screen flashes, the pixels and everything in the, I forget what it's called, but that literally affects, I mean, we all know this, that's why we wear blue light glasses. But back then we didn't have blue light glasses. It wasn't except, you know, it wasn't like everyone knew how it can affect your eyesight, but think of how that affects a child whose eyes are developing. So their physical body, their um, imagination, their ability to interact, their valuing one, and all the things you learn from all of your senses, they're just shut down. Yeah, I, I think I read this, yeah. The, the um the TV shows for kids they would they would flash every x amount of seconds they would there'd be something different in the screen and that's yeah. what holds the kids the kids uh, attention but what does that do to focus for them when they then then we're, we we have a complaint that our kids don't focus they're all unfocused they're all oh but if that's when you up, just can drug them that's when you drug them. That's what happens. Then they're told they have attention deficit disorder or whatever, and they're put on Ritalin. That's really what happens. They can't I mean, and, and, and I get you can't go from zero, you know, from no, from all this to none. But you could do things in between. You could, you could uh, have a screen free time between X and X time. We don't, we don't look at screens, and that includes, and, and I include TV and screens. And I know that a lot of people think that that's the, that's uh, that's silly because, but it's still a screen. Um, that was or you, silly. I don't see the difference. Yeah. What's the logic? People, people, the logic is, is that I guess TV has been around for a long time and computers are new, or I don't know what the difference is. Um, but yeah. We wouldn't even go to restaurants where there were TVs yeah. because the second we would, the kids would just be like, they're glued to it. it they're just like gone. You know, and then why are we here together? I, I never understood why you have to have 25 TVs in a restaurant with something different on every screen. Remember when that started happening? I mean, again, that was a thing that didn't used to be a thing. So you see that di- you experience how it changes everything in terms of human interaction. Okay, right. anyway, I guess I, I can talk about that forever because there's um, so much, so much. I, 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 um, I don't know if it's ever, I don't, it's never going to go back to what it was. I, I see that. But I, um, unfortunately, as we go on, I think the, the, um, the problems with it are going to become more and more evident. And well, I, I agree. And I appreciate you being willing to talk about it with me because 
it's a conversation I, I just don't even hear. Honestly, I really don't hear this conversation. And again, I'm not raising children, so I'm not like in the fight of it. You know, it felt like a battle at one, not so much with my older son, but my younger son. Um, we were very weird, you know? Yeah, we were weird too. Yeah. Yeah. Abusive to our children, <laughs> preventing them from, from being able to function in the real world which was a virtual world. So I think it's an important for people to hear different perspectives. And I think it's very, they, very important that they realize that virtual is not real. And, and I think that that gets confused with people. Oh, well, yeah, I met them on Zoom. No, you didn't really, like you had a conversation on Zoom, but it's not really meeting people. It's not the same thing. Yeah. It's not going out and have a cup of coffee or, yeah, or a glass of wine or whatever. Yeah. And so, so that closeness, that 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 camaraderie is 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 distanced. There still is there's, there's still a connection, but it's not it's not quite the same. Yeah, there's no energy. I mean, there is some energy, but it's it's completely different. Okay, so and I think people are learning the value, and maybe that's the good thing that's happening from this lockdown. That people, I remember I was already doing a lot of Zoom calls for my business because my clients were all over. I was used to it. And, but when it became, you know, everyone had to do it, there was a lot of panic for a lot of people. It was a hard adjustment to make. Now everyone does it. And, and at the same time, we're sick of it. So maybe yeah. people are learning, this isn't really what I want. Kind of like, I don't really want to go to the office for 10 hours a day. Maybe there's a mix. Maybe I right. can take some control and maybe it's based on my core values, like you were saying. So maybe we're getting more reconnected with that, what really matters to us and then kind of reassessing. And yeah. I love your ABCD. So um, acceptance, uh, build Don't resilience, resilient. core values, and did we dream. do the dream? Oh, how could I forget dream? Yeah, dream. So anyone who's watching this, um, everything that Mary has so generously shared can apply to building a business. Or if it, if it isn't a business, it could be anything. And you can start with your dream. Going back to that, you know, and that will allow you to be a better parent, I think, too, when you let yourself do what, what all these things Mary's talking about. Mary, you are just so lovely. Um, Thank you. You're such a heart. Now, tell us any other burning desire that you'd like to share about this, obviously, is a mission. Um, your entire yeah. life you've devoted. It's, it's yeah it's it's i it's it's uh it's funny to call it a a company or a job because it's it just seems to be so much a part of me but yeah so if they want to find out more uh they can they can go to my website which is confidentfamilies.com and there's a little bit there about me or uh find me on facebook at confident families so, and primarily you right now are doing coaching with the parents. And then do you also work with the kids? I, I, I am, I, I work with the kids also. I am currently in the um, process of finding a space for a program I've developed called Young Leaders Club, uh, mm -hmm. which will be a small group of kids, hopefully nine to 12 year olds. And mm -hmm. uh where we'll build skills necessary for leadership. We'll do activities and build skills that are necessary or, or that are conducive to leadership qualities. That sounds amazing. And I also do little things like swim beanie for the babies because I have to keep my hand in all the, all the ages. Yeah. yeah, well, you are such a beautiful heart and I just, I really resonate, as you know, with what you are doing. I think the value is just unprecedented, especially in this time. And the wisdom and perspective that you bring to the table is quite unique. It really is. There's tremendous value in it. I know I was trying to talk her into everyone building an online course. 
um, which is kind of <laughs> counterintuitive, but you know, you, you have to create the bridge for people where they are, because this is my business mind, right? Marketing, but creating that bridge to bring them to you from where they are to where they need to be. Um, I want everyone to um, experience you. They could always um, set up a conversation. I'm, I'm more than willing to, to talk to anyone. Yeah. As you can see. As you can see, she's great on Zoom. She knows how to operate. <laughs> well, Mary, thank you so, so very, very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for everyone for listening to, to me, uh, to my mission. Yeah. I appreciate it. I think you, you are providing tremendous uh, value to all of these women. So thank you. I really do appreciate it. And we will see you soon. And we will say our goodbyes to our audience. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, everyone. So I will cut that off there. But I do want to say another thank you. I just, I could... Uh, you are very easy to talk to. <laughs> love to have you like come to a retreat. I, I just think there's other things that you could, ways you could be getting. It's almost like, like very few people have what you have to share. Do you realize that? Um, you don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. Well, I always want to build a whole business around whatever, but feel free to use me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I love, I love talking about my mission and you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. It's so let me know, me. read that email. And if you want to be a part, I still have plenty of room in April because I, I was just like last week, I've got to start. If I don't start, I'm never get, I'm going to do what we were talking about early on. I'm just going to keep waiting. You know, I'm going to put it off because because it's, this is not a monet, like I'm not earning money. So I'm building my business and doing everything else. But if you want to be a part of April, go look at those dates. If not, it will always be the same format that's in that email. Um, and the same time on the second weekend of every month. Okay. I will. And, uh, and also for the people that do it early on, you can come back and do it anytime, like as long as there's space available. And if people really want to get involved, I'll just add more panels. But there's usually a small percentage of people that actually show up for things. So we'll see how. Yeah. Yeah, this is okay, Mary, you're awesome. That was so fun. Thank you. That, that was fun. Um, do, do you, you'll send me promo so that I can, I can promote whatever this yeah, is. Yeah. So what's going to happen next, is I will send you, I don't know if I sent you this already. You should have received an email, but I'll, I'll send again. There's like an email template that you can send out to your people. And if you would copy me when you do that, that would be great. I'm trying to keep track of everybody that's doing everything. And then, um, basically like people have to register to see this. Okay. And then what happens is they re will, and I don't know, are you on the list? I'll, when you need to go to the same link and register yourself so that you see what they're getting. So okay. every day you'll get a video, an inter a video interview in your email. And then they will get an invitation to attend the event automatically they can sign it's free and then they will all receive at the event i'm going to offer um a really inexpensive like vip upgrade for like 47 dollars or something and that just allows them to have special because a lot of these women are selling things so they want to have special offers for these people they can come to a vip happy hour and engage with whoever and um I can't remember what else I put on there, but you'll see all of that. Okay. You can okay. click on the links and so that you can see what they are experiencing as well. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And Thank then you. there are a couple little clips to be very transparent. Like I'm doing all this. So sometimes it falls to the back <laughs> and, but I have created a few little promo videos that I'll send you. Um, and I need to do some fresh ones. 
of like, here's little clips from three or four interviews that you can just post on your social media or whatever and say, hey, and I'll do one with you in it. So you can say, hey, I was interviewed. I'll send you a template. You know, I was interviewed. It was really cool, whatever. Sign up to see the interview. Okay, excellent, excellent. And then down the road in time, like you can also use this to, oh my gosh, my legs, to promote yourself. And we will promote you and everybody will promote each other and we will all live happily ever after. Yay. (laughs) In a non-screen world that has some screen. (laughs) Thank you so much. We have to move to Costa Rica where, yeah, that's my dream. Nice. I don't know. Living there could be a nightmare. It's the places you always think are perfect are really good to vacation in, you know? Well, you could take an extended vacation. You don't have to live there. Yeah, I'm really thinking about it, like part of the time. Anyway, okay, love you. Have a good one. Thanks, bye. Bye Bye-bye.